Hey guys, it's Dave Salvadore of Blue Line Design. Thanks for coming back to my channel for part two in my series on my epic hero quest dungeon build, dungeon board build, dungeon board build. This week I'm gonna continue by sharing with you the painting process that I used for the entire board. So let's get right into it. I'm going to start with a light gray and cream color. I dry brush some of the light gray over the dungeon. For the hallways, I wanted to have some variation in the tiles, so I kept some dark and some light. Next, I randomly dry brush some of the light gray and the cream color all over the walls. It's important to make sure the brush that you're using is really dry. You don't want the paint watered down and getting into all the cracks. I add more of the tan color to some of the tiles to give them variety. I then add a little bit of white into the light gray to lighten all the floor tiles. The reason why is later when I'm adding color to those rooms, it's just going to be easier to see the color. And then I use some of that light gray to add some extra highlights to all of the pieces. Next, I'm going to share with you a wash recipe that I learned that's really going to help you to grunge down your dungeon. Let's make some dungeon wash. Take some dish soap, black paint, brown paint, green paint, the cup, stir stick, strainer, and a bottle. Put in some water. Add some black paint. Mix it up. Add some brown paint, green paint. Mix it up. Add a few drops of dish soap to help your wash flow into the cracks. Test it out on a piece of dungeon wall. You may need to add more paint or more water. Just experiment with it until you like it. Once you like it, run it through the strainer into your bottle, slap a label on it, and you're ready for your dungeon grungeon. Now that you got your grungeon wash, liberally apply it to all the pieces. And if you feel like the grungeon is too dark while you're working with it, you can always add some water to thin it out. Place the wall pieces on some paper towels to sop up the excess wash. Once the grungeon is dried, you can see that it went into all the cracks really nice. Then we can move on to the next part, which is doing some highlighting. I use the same light gray and tan color to begin to add some of those highlights back. Now don't worry if this gets too light because we're gonna do another layer of grunge in later. The trick to doing good stonework I've found is to have layers of color and washes. I like adding a little bit of that edge highlighting to the stones, it really makes them pop. Then referencing the original board, I begin to add in the base colors of each room and I begin to lighten the center of the room to give it almost a lighting effect where it's lighter in the middle and darker around the edges. Having looked at reference of several kinds of stone walls, I realized that variation in colors of the stones is what will make the dungeon look interesting. So I begin the painstaking process of picking out several stones to paint various colors. I used a mustard yellow, a grayish blue, a dark gray, and a light gray to give that variation. Once I have the different color stones finished, I quickly tie together everything with a quick dry brushing of that light gray and tan. After that, I give everything a second coat of grungeon. I use some of the grungeon to go into the cracks to darken down the grid. I found that it was helpful to take notes of the step-by-step -step process so that I could be reminded of how I did it later. I then finish all of the pieces with a final round of highlights. These highlights really help to tie the whole wall together and to kick down some of the bold colors used for the stones. Thank you. 
Next, I'm gonna be using some Citadel shades to darken down areas and add some grime effect. I just have a good time with this. I'm adding some grime, some drips, some areas where moss might accumulate. I'm not trying to think about it too much. I'm just having fun with it. At this point, I'm doing a push and pull between shading things if I want them darker and dry brushing things with highlights if I want them brighter. I painted the sewer grate bars with an oily steel color, then I added a rusty orange color, and then did a wash of a rusty brown color. A thin coat of Minwax sprayed over all the pieces helps to make them a little more durable and also I think brings out some of the colors. To add some life and color to the dungeon, I want to incorporate some moss. I did a 50-50 mix of water and Elmer's glue. I'm going to use two kinds of flocking for my moss, a bright green fine textured one and a mossy green medium textured one. I wanted to make really durable moss that wouldn't rub off while gaming. So for the first step, I put down some glue, sprinkled on both kinds of flocking, then encapsulated it with more glue. I did the same thing for all the wall pieces, focusing on areas that I thought a lot of growth would accumulate, like the sewer grate, and also in the cracks of the corners of the room. After the glue totally dries, the next step is to use different kinds of green shades to darken down the moss. Once that dries, the final step is to take a couple of brighter green colors to dry brush some highlighting onto the moss. Final detail is to add a little bit of Woodland Scenic's real water effects around the sewer grate so that it'll still look wet. Well, there you have it guys. I hope you've been enjoying this series as much as I've been creating it. A special thanks to all those who've been subscribing the past three weeks. You've really helped my channel to grow. If you haven't yet, please subscribe. If you wanna be notified of the next video, hit the bell icon. Next time, I'm gonna share with you guys how I created those LED torchlight pillars. And until then, keep drawing, keep designing. <laughs>